What's going on everyone? I'm Daniel Rodriguez and welcome to my Luke Cage Season 1, Episode 1 Spoiler Review. I am sorry I am over a month late. Uh, it, it literally took me maybe two and a half to three weeks to finish this series. Not that it's bad or anything, but so much was going on at the end of September and then October. I mean, there was so much stuff going on and even TV shows that are a week-to-week -week basis. I was behind on many things, so that is my fault for taking forever to finish Luke Cage, uh, but I, I finished it a few weeks ago. Now, while I'm reviewing this, I am going to recap it. It should take me two minutes to recap the episode for episode one, then give you the pros, cons, and final score. But do do take note that I, I saw this episode September 30th, so it's been quite a while. So if I'm a little, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff within a month. A lot of stuff has gone into my brain, so if I do kind of be forgetful or with the pros and cons somehow, uh, please excuse me, that is my fault. So when Iron Fist, when the Punisher comes out, when Defenders come out, when all the other Netflix shows come out, I will review them the first week and the first three days all episodes will be reviewed. I will not wait a month again, I am sorry for that, that is my fault and that's my tour. I, I don't want to do that again. That was wh horrible. That is my fault again. So anyway, can't can't change back time and ain't Doctor Strange, man. I can't just do that and go back to September 30th. But if I if I would, uh, if I could, I would, man. But anyway, let's get on to uh, the recap. So we begin the series premiere of Luke Cage with Luke at Pop's Barber Shop. He works there during the day, and then at night he works at Cotton Mouth's nightclub. We see him walking through Harlem, kind of seeing it through his eyes and seeing the people and some characters that we'll see throughout season one. Now, Cottonmouth is making this deal with a guy named Domingo. Uh, junkyard, this is Junkyard shooting while this deal's going down. And Sh Shamik, I believe his name is Shamik, who was at the barbershop earlier, he kills Dante at this Junkyard shooting. Uh, so it was kind of like a trap or setup, and he ends up stealing $1 million. Now, Luke ends up sleeping with Misty, Misty Knight. We meet Misty, he meets Misty Knight at the nightclub. And then they end up seeing each other later in the streets, and then, well, they have sex. You know, uh, the good old, uh, want to go out for some coffee, or do you like coffee? I think that's what Luke always says or something. Uh, it's, a, it's a sexual reference. Anyway, Shades arrives. Theo Rossi, who plays Juice in Sons of Anarchy. How can I help you? Now, Mariah has a Harlem Renaissance at the park. Mariah is the cousin of Cotton Mouth. Uh, and she is a faker. She is faker than Sophie these tits, basically. Now, Cottonmouth kills Shamik because he found out that this boy, this teenager, this young rascal, this hoodlum, stole my money. He ruined my deal. So I'm going to bring you in. And he ends up beating him with his fist, man. Full on, I mean, the, the fist of Cottonmouth. Uh, Luke ends up noticing shades because Luke used to be in jail. So he kind of notices shades uh, from his past. And Luke goes to uh, Connie's restaurant, which is, is this restaurant in Harlem, and I guess, you know, he, he knows the people there. He, he lives at Connie's restaurant, I guess, above the, you know, above the restaurant, and he ends up stopping a bunch of these thieves and promises to protect Connie's restaurant, the owners, and says, you know, no money, no nothing, I'll protect you, make sure you guys are safe. Now on to the pros and cons. First off on the pros, Mike Coulter as Luke Cage is great. Mike Coulter is awesome on and off screen. I think the most likable thing about Luke Cage, besides him looking badass and him having super strength and bulletproof, is that he's respectable. Luke is very kind and nice, the type of guy you want to be friends with. Now, Netflix always does a really good job with their action scenes, whether it's Daredevil and the choreography, hallway fights, stairway fights, Jessica Jones simply just throwing a man across the room or into a door, and then we have Luke Cage, man. I mean, the practical effects and, you know, a little CGI within the whole season itself, but mostly practical, whether it's wires or such, or just throwing them in the air or throwing them across the room. It is fun action to see. Mind you, it's not Daredevil action. I mean, a little bit more fun of that but Luke does do various different fight scenes during the season but within this episode the not Luke Cage related I guess in early in the episode with the deal and Shamik and when they ended up killing a bunch of the people at the the when they sold the one million dollars there was a shotgun blast and the shotgun blast kind of launched the guy 
in a brutal way, not like totally like gory, yeah, brutal, but I mean, it was enough brutal where I was like, damn, Netflix, you're going all in on that, aren't you? So in the action, the practical effects are always great, and especially the CGI, when Luke Cage at the end, when the guy ends up punching Luke Cage, and the wrist, and the bone pops out. It's pretty gnarly. Now heave my words, people. Every single episode review I do for Luke Cage, this is going to be the pro, a uh, part of the pros on the pros list. The music in Luke Cage is awesome. It fits every single episode. Three, another thing I really loved about this episode are the characters and the way that they're introduced, such as Misty Knight and Pop. The opening scene at the barber shop, I thought the dialogue there, because it was it was a conversation, it was back and forth and the swear jar and, and this and that. And really Luke Cage ain't talking. We're just we're hearing Pop's conversation with this guy. And, and this guy he's young and he thinks he's all that and yeah, you know I know the streets, right? And I don't know, but these people, you know, they they're kinda of disrespected, disrespectful talk. And just the way the dialogue was done, I thought it was very, very awesome. Uh, and, and the dialogue doesn't stay like that throughout the whole season, sadly. Like, it has its ups and downs. Uh, sometimes it's very cheesy dialogue, and then, you know, then it's that really, really great uh, content, a dialogue, and quality. But I thought the opening barbershop scene was great. Uh, Pop is an awesome character. Misty Knight has her ups and downs during the season, but for this episode, her meeting Luke, it's like, ah, we're gonna get a little bit of an on. He does with the sex scene. We've already seen him have sex with Jessica Jones. Uh, Marvel going too dark in these Netflix series, but it's A OK -okay in our book. Uh, but seriously, that sex scene. You know what I like about that sex scene is they don't go hard. You know what I mean? Like they don't they don't show much. There, there really is like it's quick. It's what like 30 40 seconds of a scene, maybe less than 30 seconds and there's really no there's nothing to see except like somebody's back and then this like it's it's all covered up and uh not I'm saying it, it, but usually like American Horror Story, other TV shows, like on basic cable, you know, they show more revealing things and a butt and everything. And with this, like, nothing really to show, just a little skin, and that was it. So I thought the sex scene, it didn't have to go all the way out there, and it didn't. It stayed pretty formal. Another thing that Netflix does really well with these Marvel series is the cinematography. This is another thing that's going to be going for every single episode, all the 13 episodes for Luke Cage. The cinematography is great. It is beautifully, like, beautifully, it's like, I guess what, the, the 4K, I don't have a 4K TV, but that's what they film it on, right? Like, very HD quality, you could see the, the pores in their faces and everything. Uh, I, I love the way that they film it on. Whatever camera they're using, whatever lens, whatever they're doing, keep it up. And last but not least for the pros, Cottonmouth. Now, I cannot pronounce the actor's name who plays Cottonmouth, but I really enjoy this guy, man. The way that he beat up Shamik, and I think they, they showed his face, too. I mean, he was swollen and gross, and, and just the way that it was done, and I mean, he's playing the piano, and he's... He, he's he, Again, with the cinematography, and everybody wants to be king. And the whole background of the, the painting of Big E, I mean, it, it works so well. The actor who plays Cottonmouth, very promising villain. You want to see more of Cottonmouth. You want to see where he goes. Uh, so it, it really enlightens you. It gives you a tease of what Cottonmouth's going to do during the season, during this episode. And you're like, okay, like he, he's a man, a businessman, not to be messed with. He has a, a short temper, a short fuse. Uh, and it's really, you know... Kingpin from Daredevil Season 1, and, and then going to Jessica Jones, Kilgrave, and now we got Cottonmouth. And, and you can see, like, the way he acts, you're like, okay, this guy could possibly rise up to Kilgrave level or to Kingpin level, because he's almost like a Kingpin in a way. Now, honestly, I don't have anything bad to say about this episode. I thought it was really good the way they introduced the characters, the action, and the dialogue in the beginning with the barbershop and some of the... Uh, I think there was an Avengers reference when Luke was walking in Harlem and there was this guy selling tapes and he was talking about, like, the Avengers. Uh, so the subtle references and everything, like, there was really nothing wrong about this episode. Uh, now, there, it does have its ups and downs during the season. It's not a perfect 10 out of 10 season, but for episode one, it was great. It wasn't amazing, but it was great. There were some slow scenes in here, and I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and say 
part of the story and stuff because, yeah, there are slow scenes in here. Uh, especially Mariah Dillard. She has some slow scenes throughout the whole season in general. Uh, like, she's an interesting character, but her scenes are always the kind where... You, you know, you try to you try to keep up, and then you get a little tired, and you, you you get your eyes start to close. So there are a lot of slow scenes within the season, but for episode one, yeah, there it, it does have a, a couple of slow scenes uh, within episode one that kind of like, oh, come on, you know, dialogue, 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 little action doesn't even have Luke Cage in that action. It's the the one million dollars and the Shamik. Slow, 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 build up, build up, build up, build up. And then you see Luke Cage at the end fight somebody for once. So, you know what I mean? It was like, uh, get to it already. Like, let's go, man. Anyway, I'm going to give Luke Cage Season 1, Episode 1, an A-. minus. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed, make sure to smack that like button. You can comment down below. Tell me what you guys thought about Luke Cage Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, tell me your favorite parts. Tell me your least favorite parts. Share this review with your friends. Hit that subscribe button for more. Until next time, bye-bye.